Hello again everyone, welcome back to Pita Chemistry Channel. So this is the last part of these redox changes for the combined science of these foundation tier science uh, where I'll be specifically talking about the chemistry contents only on my channel. So here, candidates should be able to describe and use a test to identify oxygen gas using a glowing splint. So this kind of come out of Norway uh, as part of redox changes. I don't know why they actually put it together under the specification for redox changes, apart from the fact that, you know, redox is to do with reduction and also oxidation happening or occurring at the same time in the same reaction, where we talk about reduction being a loss of oxygen and then oxidation as being gain of oxygen oxygen. So it could be that as part of redox changes questions, they could ask you, oh well, you know, oxygen has reacted or oxygen is being formed. So therefore you have to try and identify. Identify basically says, uh-huh, this is oxygen gas. But we know that oxygen is colorless. We also know that it's odorless. In fact, I already got it in the notes, so I just write it down here. Colorless means no color. Odorless means it doesn't smell anything. We are breathing in oxygen, which is, uh, which is actually around 21% of our air, which is a mixture. It has around 21% of oxygen in the air, which is oxygen. So, you know, we are breathing in oxygen and we don't smell it. We don't see it, but how can we identify that the oxygen is present? We have to use this thing called glowing splint, okay? When you have a wooden splinter and then you have fire still on, so where the fire, well, the flame, the flame is still, is still present, that is what you call a burning splint. That's what you call a burning splint. But be careful, here we use a glowing splint. So this is not for oxygen. For oxygen, we need a burning spleen. So what we need is, we just need the one where it's got a um, flicker. There's no more flame, but it's got like a flicker here. So no more flame. You don't have any more fire going, but you just have uh, a little bit of flickers. Um, basically, you know, like the, the tiny bit of like orangey thing that, that remains at the end when this fire gets put out. So this is what you call a glowing splint. So a glowing splint is not a burning splint. You use a burning splint to test for something else. Later on, you will learn in practical chemistry, burning splint is test for hydrogen gas, whereas glowing splint is test for oxygen gas. That is what we are trying to test for here. We use a glowing splint. Of course, we know that O2, O2 is a simple molecular structure, simple molecular structure or simple covalent structure. This is part of year nine, year nine uh, combined science chemistry, which is to do with this dot and cross oxygen molecule. You call it a diatomic molecule because both the oxygen atoms want to obtain a fully filled out the shell. That's because a fully filled out the shell is stable. You got uh, eight electrons in the outer shell. Um, around each oxygen atom. So here you got one covalent bond and here you got another covalent bond. So altogether you get two covalent bonds. Two covalent bond means four electrons that are being shared all together. Okay. So what is the gas? The gas is oxygen. What is the test? The test is glowing splint. Remember glowing splint is this one without the flame anymore, but it still got flickers and then it will rekindle or it will relight so it goes from glowing splint and then the flame will spark again because oxygen supports combustion. You need oxygen for burning. If you supply oxygen to this, the flicker will turn into flame again because that's what we call glowing splint relights. So that means it was not burning when you use a glowing splint and now it become burning because it relights. It, get, it gets back to being on flame, all right? So do not confuse yourself with burning spleen. I already done that. Burning spleen has the flame still going. Of course, that was what I already said. Oxygen support combustion. That's why the glowing spleen relights that. We will revisit this idea on the test for gases as we do practical and also uh, chemical analysis. We do practical experiments and then we'll analyze um, stuff, including identification of gases, not only for oxygen, but for hydrogen and many other gases. Something for you to look forward to when the time comes. 
We'll just wrap up this tutorial by going through a couple more questions on Redox changes. Just to reinforce uh, the idea, Redox is basically short for reduction and also oxidation reactions happening simultaneously, happening at the same time. Reduction involves loss of oxygen, whereas oxidation involves gain of oxygen. So these are not necessarily oxygen molecule, uh, but they could also be oxygen molecule, of course. These are basically just looking at the, the substance, gaining oxygen atom or losing oxygen atom. In this first question, in which change is oxidation taking place? So oxidation is gain of oxygen. So we look at the stuff on the left-hand side. So the VO2 becomes V2O3. That looks confusing because the vanadium has increased. Uh, yeah, that looks really confusing, isn't it? Mm. This all looks confusing. I'll tell you which one is not confusing. This is V2. This is also V2. So there's three oxygen. There's five oxygen. So for the same number of vanadium, because we have different number of vanadium in the other example, right? For the same number of vanadium, V2 or 3 gains oxygen. And then it goes from three oxygen to become five oxygen. This is definitely oxidation, which is your option D there. What I can say is you can think of this as like one vanadium. And then here you got two vanadium. So here there is two oxygen, two times oxygen per one vanadium. What do you have here? You have three oxygen, but then it's per two vanadium. Therefore, it's 1.5 oxygen per one vanadium. You go from two oxygen to 1.5 oxygen. So this is reduction because per one vanadium, every single vanadium actually has lesser oxygen than previously. So A is reduction and it's not oxidation. The same idea can be applied to here. Here you got two vanadium, but you got five oxygen. So therefore, uh, per one vanadium, you got five divided by two, which is 2.5 oxygen atom. But here you got two oxygen atoms for one vanadium. So going from 2.5 oxygen for one vanadium, you become two oxygen for one vanadium. So you get a loss of oxygen, which is going to be reduction again. Same thing here, you get two vanadium and three oxygen, so it's 1.5 oxygen per vanadium. And now you get one oxygen, which means 1.5 oxygen per vanadium, going to one oxygen, there's again reduction. This is the best option of all. We don't even have to divide by two because they are the same amount of vanadium. Three oxygen going to five oxygen, gain of oxygen is oxidation there. Question two, very popular case study. This is to do with the extraction of iron or manufacture of iron. And you get it from this thing called iron tree oxide. We did this in the lecture tutorial, in the last lecture tutorial, just balancing the equation, very, very famous case study. The easy one to balance is the iron. The CO2 and the CO is very difficult to balance because if you try to balance it with three oxygen then, and if you put down two there, and to them, your oxygen will not balance because there's only four oxygen, there's two oxygen and three oxygen can give you five oxygen. So actually, you need three CO2, and because of that, you got three carbons, you need three CO there. So six oxygen, because three times two is six oxygen, you got three times one, which is three oxygen, plus another three oxygen there, give you six oxygen. This equation is balanced, all right? Now the next bit, this is a bit tricky. This is called reducing agent. If you are a killer, you kill someone. If you are reducing agent, you reduce the other substance. You reduce the other substance. So a killer or an assassin kills the other person, but then a reducing agent will reduce the other substance. So it says carbon monoxide, which is CO, is reducing the other substance. Therefore, uh, we can say the CO reduces the Fe2O3. But then this is not answering the question. The question say how, how, okay? You gotta explain. There's two lines, so you cannot just write one thing. You have to talk about the CO steals away the oxygen, or you can say it gains the oxygen. It gains the oxygen uh, that is being lost by the, or from the, iron three oxide because the Fe2O3 loses oxygen as you could imagine the Fe2O3 loses oxygen so therefore there is your reduction 
So what causes this reduction? Reducing agent causes this reduction. Reducing agent reduces the other substance. Reducing agent causes the Fe2O3 to lose oxygen because the CO steals away the oxygen and therefore it undergoes oxidation while it reduces the Fe2O3. Now use this equation to explain why the Fe2O3 is reduced. Well, it's kind of like repeating the same idea from the previous question. As you can see, they're actually from different years of past year paper questions. So the idea revolves around this idea of oxidation and reduction. We look at this, the Fe2O3 loses the oxygen uh, to, form, to form Fe. So going from left to right, you have Fe2O3, it has oxygen. And then this one, Fe, there's two Fe, but the species is Fe. So we don't care about the number in front except to balance the questions. Therefore, we can say the Fe2O3 uh, has been reduced because loss of oxygen is reduction. So loss of oxygen is reduction. So this is just defining reduction as per the syllabus there. Now the last bit is on calculation. So this is part of your year nine, uh, year nine reacting masses. So we need the periodic table to work out the relative atomic mass uh, of iron as well as of oxygen. So typically they will give you from the periodic table, the relative atomic mass of iron. Um, if I just look at my periodic table, iron is element 26, the AR is 56 and then oxygen which is element number uh, number eight the ar is 16 there so what do we need to do we need to calculate the mr of fe3 oxide so your first step is mr of fe2 or 3 so you got two times 56 because you got two of that iron so two times 56 plus three times 16 because you got three of that oxygen So I get 160 and then the same the maximum mass of iron from the iron tree oxide here we could see one of fe2 or 3 give me two of fe so I will write down one fe2 or 3 give me two fe so I will talk about reacting masses first of all so reacting masses depends on how many multiple you have you have one multiple of it mr is always for one mr is always for one unit here you have one unit so therefore you have 160 times one which is 160 gram here you got two units of fe this is again for one unit this is for one unit this is 56 but you have two of it because from the balance equation above that you just did balance you get two fe so there's two times 56 which will give you 112 gram so what do they want they want 12.5 gram of iron tree oxide. So 160 gram of that give me that. So therefore, 12.5 gram of that will give me, well, I still don't know, isn't it? This is X. This is where I do my cross multiply. So that and that. And this was what you did in year nine. So 160 times X equal to this times that. So you can have 112 times 12.5. You could also get 12.5 times 112. The mathematics is the same thing. These are your classic cross multiply lower secondary math. Uh, could also be primary school math. I have no idea because I don't teach math, but I can assure you it's something that you'll be able to do provided you actually did understand the concept of reacting masses from year nine, a year nine concept, which is carried forward in a year 10 question and will come out in the real all level or IGCSE or whatever 14 to 16 years old curriculum that you are doing wherever you are in the world. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to the channel and follow me at ptet.chemistry across all the popular social media platforms. See you in the next tutorial video.